four money tips I wish I could tell my younger self. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, nowhere near one, but I have made some money and I have made some money online. This is my third channel. My first two channels are monetized and this one will be soon. And But first, I have to recommend this book right here, The Richest Man in Babylon. This book, I'm on my third read. I probably had this book for like three, maybe four years now. But this book has helped me in a lot of ways when it has come to building a better relationship with money. And that's probably your problem right now. You have a bad relationship with money. So I'm going to give you four tips I wish I could tell my younger self about money. Number one is to live within your means. Now, growing up, I spent a lot of time probably somewhat living outside of my means when it came to I had my first job when I was about 13, 14. I was working at Food Line, stuff like that. But I was spending most of my money on shoes and clothes and going out and stuff like that. If only I had knew that, you know, maybe I can get some stuff, but not to the point where every time I get my check, it's gone in a few days. You know, I was living above my means and yeah, I would have probably had a lot more money today if I knew back then to pay myself first. I need to save and invest some of this money before I decide to just blow it on stuff that's materialistic and just going to get dirty and be destroyed after a while. The next one is to work hard and seize opportunity. Now, this one I didn't have too much of a problem with, I'll say early on in life because I grew up playing sports. I knew what having a work ethic was. I knew what moving with a sense of urgency was. I knew what it was to work hard. But sometimes throughout my life, I fell into different times, especially when I was like smoking a lot where I would let opportunities pass me by. And for example, I used to make beats and stuff like that. And, you know, during that time, I was like living the rapper lifestyle before I even got into the industry. I was smoking a lot, um, hanging with a lot of guys that I probably shouldn't have been hanging with and letting some opportunities pass me by. I wasn't it's friendly. I wasn't as much of a networker as I am now. So I could have made certain connections that would have got me further along in that um, journey of being a producer I was, that I was in. So you have to work hard and you have to seize opportunity. I'm not a big believer I'm in luck, but what I think luck actually is, is just being prepared for an opportunity. If you prepare, you put that work in, you're going to notice those opportunities a lot more than other people will. The next one is to reinvest your profits, man. This is a big one. Like growing up, I went through a lot of different business ventures. Honestly, I was selling candy at one point, selling shoes at one point, restoring shoes at one point, doing a bunch of different types of stuff, selling clothes, t-shirts. And one thing that I didn't really do much was reinvest my profits. I learned this way later on in life when actually when I was in the streets and stuff to do that. But, uh, that aside, back then, I wasn't reinvesting my profits. I would, you know, sell a couple pairs of shoes and use that money to buy some whole other stuff instead of getting more inventory. Or, you know, I'd clean up a couple pairs of shoes for somebody and instead of getting more supplies to clean more shoes, I'd use that money on other stuff. And now that I'm saying this, it's also really big to keep your business money where it's at. You need to treat your businesses like their own entity. So you can pay yourself from that, but pay yourself from that and keep that with you and then make sure your business has its own cash flow that's keeping it afloat. And number four, man, borrow sensibly, bro. You got to understand like, and this is this is a big one. A lot of people, we don't notice until it's too late. And for you young guys, man, you young ladies, man, I, I really want y'all to understand this. Like, your parents, they might be the type, they're a little bit older. They don't understand all the opportunity to get money and become successful we have in this world now. So they might force you to, or like push you to try to, um, or not even try, push you to sign up for these student loans and get into all of this debt early on as a child. And that's the setup of the world, literally. Because once you got a lot of debt, then it kind of makes you a slave. Now, I'm not saying all debt is bad because there is like debt that's not bad. There are wealthy people that leverage their debt, but usually it's for business opportunities and it's for something that they, yeah, they may have the money for, they might not have the money for, but they got good credit and they're able to 
leverage that to get what they need to get done. They're not spending, um, they're not getting into debt for liabilities or they're not hedging their debt on stuff that's going to take like three, four years to um, even get the results from. And the results is a job. And then you still, of course, have sometimes hundreds of thousands of student loan debt that you got to pay back and it's, it's collecting interest and all of that stuff. It's really a setup, man. You want to make sure when you're borrowing money, borrowing anything that it's for stuff that makes sense. It's for something that you can see your results from. It doesn't, like, everything's not going to happen fast. You know, you might borrow money to buy a house, to rent it out or something like that. And yeah, it might take a little time for you to see the profit. But at least that's making money on its own. You don't really have to do much once everything is set up. Rather than you taking out all these big old student loans so you can go party and waste money and uh, get a degree that you probably won't even use and end up starting your adult years way behind than some other kids that either had scholarships or took different routes, like went to the military or decided to start a business or were already doing stuff in high school to get big on these apps, TikTok and all this different stuff. And don't get me wrong, I'm not the guy to say college is a total scam because there are some fields, like if you want to be a doctor or a lawyer in some stage that you're going to have to go through that process. But even then, you're not jumping right into your field. Usually, you, know, you got to take a bunch of classes and stuff that you that have nothing to do with your degree that you're trying to get. A lot of people are in college trying to get communications degrees and they're paying for gym class. So definitely make sure you borrow sensibly. That's a big one. That's a big factor. So let's go back over all four of them. Live within your means, work hard and seize opportunities, reinvest your profits, and borrow sensibly. If I would have known these things growing up, I would have been way further ahead. I don't blame my parents because, you know, they didn't grow up in this age of information that we are in now. Nowadays, we got no excuse. We got no excuse to do the best we can and then also teach the younger generation the all the things that we know now because it's, it's out there we got all the information in the palm of our hands drop a like if you like the video man as always love y'all my family one last thing make sure you get to the telegram if you're not in the telegram group that's why i'm giving daily updates also check out the patreon and also got a donation link if you want to support the channel that's it though all right y'all